Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Remote Working, Assess, Address, and Adapt. This event is brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise and produced by Actual Tech Media. My name is David Davis of Actual Tech Media, and I'm excited to be your moderator for today's event. Now on today's event, uh, first off, we want you to know that we want this to be educational. So we encourage you to use the questions box there in your console. And we'll be answering those questions throughout the event. We'll also be doing a dedicated Q&A session at the end of today's event. So make sure you get your questions in early and we'll be queuing the best questions up for that Q&A session. We also have a couple of handouts available for download there in your audience console. We have the full slide deck from today's presentation in PDF. You can download that and check it out after the event. Uh, there's also the HPE GreenLake VDI solution brief. So go ahead and download those because they won't be easily accessible after today's event. And finally, we'll be giving out an Amazon $300 gift card to one lucky attendee today. If you're watching this on demand, I'm sorry, the drawing has already occurred. The prize terms and conditions can be found there in the handouts tab where it says ATM prize terms and conditions. And with that, I'm excited to introduce you to today's expert presenters. Uh, today, you'll hear from Mr. Kevin Kramer, Practice Lead for Network, Workplace, and IoT at Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and Mr. Mark Waite, Worldwide Architect for the Digital Workplace at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Kevin and Mark, thank you so much for being on the event today. Hey, thanks. 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 And with that, take it away. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Uh, I'm Mark Waite. I work in the worldwide um, practice area in Hewlett Packard Enterprise in the HP Point Next team. And I'm joined by Kevin Kramer, uh, who works in our US uh, HP Point Next team as well. Um, what we wanted to do today was sort of talk about some of the issues that we've been uh, hearing from our customers and, and, and people out there who are having challenges at the moment. And we all know what's going on around the world right now is is really causing us issues. Um, we're finding, you know, we're all working from home in HPE. There's a, uh, we, we had our own issues, which I'll talk about in a minute, but we know that a lot of our customers and, and you guys out there are having challenges and have, have had challenges. A lot of the time it might have been solved, but, but in some cases it may not have been. Um, the move to remote work and the change in the dynamic of how we all have to work at the moment has been really, really considerable. Um, it's been really affecting here in the UK and in the US, um, and a lot of businesses have been caught out with it. Um, we, we need our staff to work uh, as though they were sat in the office in some cases, if they're an office type worker. And it becomes more difficult when you've got an engineering business or an industrial business where you may have key workers working in your environment. You need to still be able to collaborate and do the work you need to do, and we can't compromise on any of the security around doing that. So there's a real challenge that, that the, the environment now has given us. Um, and what, what we've been looking at is how does this affect a business in, in this way? Um, we need to quickly adopt remote work practices in some cases, and, and many businesses have been okay with that. Um, if I if I look at us as a, as a business HPE, we had 50% of our staff sat in an office and 50% of our staff sat remotely, whether it's on a customer site or working from home or, or in, as a remote worker. And at the point where everyone got sent home and we closed all the offices, you can imagine that that caused us um, huge overheads on our VPN. Um, we were having issues with Skype because we were contending with uh, the VPN access. And there are issues that our IT team had to fix, like in most cases. I'm sure all of you have had very similar issues. When you do that and you've got those costs that you need to spend, you, you're sort of reticent that at the current market and current climate, not a lot of people are spending money. If we've got shops that are shut, we've got to conserve our cash. You know, we've got to keep those costs down during our economic uncertainty period. We need to be able to do those things that we would normally do sat in an office, be able to do those virtually. And some of the thing I'll talk about on here is around things like Teams. Um, and we're using this platform here 
um, to, to do the webinar, but a lot of people are using things like Zoom, and we've got Zoom inside HPE that we've been using regularly. But also it may mean that we need to look at the, the back end infrastructure to be able to make that work. So as I said before, we might need to expand our VPN capability or look at the, the VDI infrastructure. And finally, there's, there's a whole issue of if you have a large amount of people working on sensitive data and they're working on desktop PCs, you suddenly got to try and find a whole raft of laptops, which might be quite difficult, or you're going to have to send them home and allow them access via untrusted devices. And that is also a challenge. So we'll talk about that as well. So BCM in this instance, I've done many BCM uh, plans and designs in my previous life, um, working in IT on, on your side of the fence, doing the, the do in, a, in IT departments inside many different companies. And it, it's fair to say that a lot of the people that um, you talk to and a lot of the, the articles that I've read recently, um, people really didn't plan for the pandemic. It was one of those things, if you look at the Business Continuity Institute uh, chart, it was that 3% thing that you would deal with, not the 50 or 60% things such as reputational damage or, or um, malware or, or those type of things. We wouldn't take account necessarily of a pandemic. So this has really caught us out because we would normally uh, have a spare data center or, or a spare infrastructure in data center, or we would have some sort of resilience between multiple sites. Um, but this is totally a different paradigm. It's not the same thing that we've all built before. That, so that, as I've said before, VPN might be overloaded, but the other thing that we're finding or we found is that um, the usual utilization of VDI within a company uh, is around 10%. So there's only usually specific use cases that have access to a VDI environment. And now we may have to give people access to this VDI environment from an untrusted device, um, and we don't have enough capacity on the infrastructure. Um, and finally, the, even if you have gone to mobility and you've moved to something like Microsoft 365, you might struggle to give access to your platform because if you're tromboning your data through your, your on-premise uh, data center because you want to use your on-premise uh, proxy service to allow you access to Office 365 and you're not using split tunnel or, or cloud proxies, you may find that your uh, internet connection is now getting quite overwhelmed. So if these are all the case and, and we're looking at what the challenges are, we, we've got to look at from an employee perspective, they want to be able to still do their work. So what, what are the things that are really important to the employee in this instance? And it's, can they still access all of the key apps and the data they need to do their job? Um, you know, they're non-technical guys who just want to go and sit in a location at home, in most cases, and do the same thing that they could do sat at their desk in the office. Does everything still work the same way it did before? And can I still work effectively remotely? Not just around the tools and the apps that I've got access to, but have I got some way of collaborating with my peers? Have I got some way of working effectively with my peers? And even things like um, we did a, a, some, we've done some consultancy with one bank who wanted us to just help them understand what are the things that they need to use from a management of change perspective? And we'll talk about that a bit later on. Kevin will go through management of change. Things like giving them the tools around talking to their kids to make sure they're not downloading Netflix at the time when they're on a conference call like this, for example. So it's little things and little tips, but it's really helpful for those of us who've been working remotely for a long time to pass that information on to the new home workers and, and allow them to use the tools that we've been using and got used to. And then from a business perspective, what do you need to be able to look at from a business perspective? And you still want to enable access to that secure corporate application or even a full environment. And potentially that needs to be from any untrusted device without introducing risk. Um, enabling those end users to collaborate and keep working even in the event that they must work from home. And it needs to be provisioned rapidly, sometimes within hours. So it could be that you want the service to be able to flex up to allow you to give access to four remote workers, and then they might want to come back in the office. Or it could be they stay out and stay permanently as remote workers, you don't know. So we need the flexibility to be able to scale up and scale down the service at the end of an event, or even as, a, as the new normal. 
So I'm going to talk about the VDI and collaboration piece that we've got, and I'll talk about two things to do with that one. In fact, there'll be three things. One is a new service that we've introduced, which is based on something that we did a few years back called the Rapid Client Virtualization Assessment. And this is a new service, which is a very fast remote assessment that I'll explain about and helps us look at and understand and bring all of our knowledge together with you to look at your environment, look at your current pain points and help you build the strategy out of the current situation and so that you've got a repeatable process going forward. I'll talk about the hardware that we have that sits underneath all of this and underpins the solution, but also some of the elements I'll talk about on here is cloud. So I'm from Point Next, and we have hybrid cloud is, is in our DNA. And some of the worst things that I'll talk about here will be maybe the cloud is also the way to go. But in some cases, it might also be that you want the cloud type of utilization. You want to be able to pay based on usage, but you want that on premise. And I'll also talk about our GreenLake VDI proposition as well. So. Emergency VDI is the first piece of this, and, and you might have a, a scenario where you're a bank or a, a financial institution or a healthcare environment, and you've got staff that are sat on premise. They use full fat client desktop PCs, and they're working on a day-to-day -day basis, normally sat at their specific desk, and suddenly these guys have got to go home. And you've gone to the laptop vendor, and they've gone, we haven't got enough in the chain, that we can't get you more than 20, maybe a couple of hundred. Um, we can't get enough hardware to you because we're on lockdown. So what do you do? What's the next thing you can do? So there is an option of using things like on-site desktops and you can use uh, Citrix to a uh, platform called Remote Desktop that you can expand the, your existing Citrix environment so that you can use those desktop PCs from any device remotely. Uh, we need some infrastructure to allow you to do that, but that's one way to do it. And that is the fastest way to get access to those devices is to use something like remote desktop. Um, it might be that you've got a test environment or a dev environment that you can repurpose. But the whole idea of this is that what we will do is sit down with you and, and work through all of these different environments with you and all of these different options and do this emergency VDI work should you need us to, to assist you and build an emergency VDI platform so that if you've got workers that may be furloughed, they might be able to be productive again. It could be that you've got key workers coming in the office and actually they could be better off at home and you would allow you to send them home. So that's what we've put this together for is a very fast and, and quick assessment. The assessment then leads into the um, expansion of your existing infrastructure. So. The rapid assessment will highlight if you've got existing VDI infrastructure and whether or not we can then help you build and expand your existing uh, VDI infrastructure rapidly. We've got a lot of reference architectures and a lot of uh, platforms that we can bring in, and you probably already have an, a knowledge around, uh, if you're an existing VDI user, what your um, personas look like. And we can help you expand that VDI infrastructure really quickly by bringing it in and standing it up with your help and putting it in. And then finally, for the long-term um, solution, we're talking about a pay-per-month scenario. So uh, GreenLake is the uh, overarching service uh, category that we have inside HPE. And the HPE GreenLake uh, VDI service is a fully boxed and, and uh, platform product that we literally, and I'll go through it in a minute, t-shirt sizes where you just select the number of personas that you want and we can deliver you an in fully managed end-to-end -end environment, uh, which is delivered as a service and build based on usage. So if I go to the assessment, I'm quickly going to run through these slides. They're very wordy and there are lots of text on them. Um, but if you look in your handouts section on the left hand side, you can actually download this slide deck as well so that you can look in uh, through this at your leisure and understand what we're trying to do. But I'm going to scoop through these slides to give you an idea of what what we would do inside the assessment and how we structured it. So the rapid assessment is done via Zoom or Teams or whatever you would want us to use. Um, and it's all done virtually. It's an idea of bringing the knowledge and the skills and the understanding that we have within HP Point Next um, and pulling it together with you so that we can look at the, the current challenges you've got and do the assessment with your applications, identity, license, network, persona, and your existing infrastructure. 
and highlight those short-term goals and help you get the capacity required to be able to allow you to, to uh, uh, solve the short-term problems you've got. We then work with you as well to try and build a longer-term VDI strategy with you or a longer-term collaboration strategy. And you know, if we go forward and take an example that I've put in here, for example, this could be an insurance company with a whole raft of underwriters who are working on desktop PCs, and they've got some VDI on Citrix, but it's a really limited capacity. And the staff on those PCs aren't used, they're not call center staff, so they're not using directly attached hardware that would stop them from working remotely quickly. But the data they're accessing is secure and the applications are hosted in your data center and they're not externally accessible. We don't allow them to access that from uh, a laptop. And there is an internet connection and a VPN for senior managers who have laptops, but they're limited by the number of licenses on the ASA. And the customer really needs to get the underwriters working securely remotely, but doesn't have any stock of spare laptops and needs to use untrusted bring your own device devices for the underwriters. They want them to be productive. So in this case, we run the additional and the initial workshop and we created a proposed solution and scope. And actually this was done in Russia, this specific instance that I'm talking about here. Um, the fastest way to create a service with the limitations would be to use the Citrix remote desktop service. So we installed the VDA on every single desktop PC in scope and we allowed those users to log in. And what that did is it created a relationship between the user and the device. We then allowed the customer to put in some extra gateway servers, some very small VMs inside the virtual infrastructure to support the extra users. And they were aside the VPN, so the customer didn't need to VPN in. They would connect in through the customer's internet connection. And actually they can be hosted in Azure if you really want to. In most cases, in this case, we, we hosted them in the customer's environment, but this could be in Citrix Cloud as well. And then in parallel, we worked with the customer to re-look at their long-term plans and their long-term strategy. And I think it took two weeks from the instigation to us to actually having the users productive, which is fantastic. And this is a very quick end-to-end uh, -end modules of a cloud type scenario. So it could well be that Citrix Cloud could be used in this scenario and we're using VDI in the cloud to uh, augment the VDI on premise. So this is an example of the type of modules that we could do in that. So again, the rapid assessment is at the beginning with one day. And then we went through, we go through the design and the build platform all the way through to the scale down and evergreen at the end where, you know, in the long term, we can turn this down, keep the environment available inside Citrix Cloud so that if you need to expand out into it for BCM environment in the future, your users may not necessarily notice that you've moved them into that environment. It might allow you to expand and augment the amount of capacity that you've got on premise as well. So this is just a very quick uh, assessment service. And, uh, and like I say, I would recommend downloading the handout and going through it in detail. And you can ask us any questions, of course. Alongside that, we've mentioned about increasing the amount of capacity that you've got. So obviously, HPE, we are uh, one of the biggest uh, vendors that run Citrix. Um, we also run a lot of VMware Horizon View platforms as well. Um, we have our ProLiant which are the workhorses. We've got our, uh, you know, DL380, DL360s. Uh, we've got our Synergy platform, which is fantastic and allows you to, it's our sort of blade chassis on steroids um, with uh, hyper-converged infrastructure. And then the Moonshot, if you've not seen what Moonshot is, Moonshot's quite a clever concept. Um, uh, Moonshot is a way of putting lots and lots of individual small blade servers into a chassis. Uh, and the people who tend to use Moonshot, we've seen a lot of uh, large financial customers, uh, trading customers, trading houses, use Moonshot. And if you use Moonshot in collaboration with um, Citrix, for example, uh, it allows you to have a one-to-one -one relationship with the TIN, with the Citrix workload. So you could have a VDA that literally, much like the remote desktop way of doing it, that I was talking about just now, each of those remote desktops is a blade inside a chassis. So you can imagine the benefits of having that from a trading situation is that those traders could be located anywhere and actually all their compute is sat in the data center next to all the platforms they're needing to, to, to access. So those solutions, we can help you with those. There are finance packages and deals that are going on at the moment, which I can't talk about on here, but there are lots of information about that on our website, um, including sort of buy now, pay later type uh, scenarios. Um, and obviously GreenLake as well, to allow you to use this in a consumption model rather than just buying it outright. So coming into GreenLake, 
uh, GreenLake VDI. This is our way of trying to make a um, off the peg VDI platform for um, for you. Um, in most cases, we so I'm one of the two architects who who helped design the GreenLake VDI platform. And the whole thought process and idea around it was, you don't tend to buy um, made to measure clothes every time you buy new clothes. You tend to buy off the peg because it roughly fits with what you want. And actually, we've put in an awful lot of Citrix environments and, and VMware environments over the last sort of 10 years. And we've got a lot of the logic and the knowledge that came from building those environments for many customers. And roughly, they seem to fit into five different personas. And if you were to deliver a platform based on those five different personas, it would cover 94% of use cases. There are a few that fall out of there. But in most cases, those, those five personas that we've put together will cover 95% of use cases. And we said, well, if we, if we know that the average across all of these implementations that we've done looks like this, why don't we build a platform that actually allows you to consume it in this way? And this directly competes with things like um, Azure uh, um, desktop, Windows Virtual Desktop, or, or um, with uh, AWS Workspaces. Um, but it also competes with um, uh, uh, desktop as a service type environments that are hosted inside third party data centers. And actually, the whole point of a VDI platform in most cases is to allow secure and performant access to an environment that is in your data center. So you just pick which ones you want of the different um, standardized desktop use options that I've said about, and then we just give you a monthly bill based on the usage underpinned by the GreenLake model. So what are the benefits to that? Well, because it's pre-designed, the time to value is really fast because it's a turnkey solution. You just select the numbers that, of what you want, and we will deliver you a hardware infrastructure based on that. It's delivered as a service, so you just pay for what you're using. It's scalable, so as you need to use more, we can just add more blocks of compute. And the way it's designed is it's it's a low change touch for you as well. So the management plane of this is is static. And in most cases, in most VDI environments, as you know, the management element of it tends to be very static. It's the compute that tends to change, and that's how we've designed it. The compute is just blocks and bundles of DL380 in this case. And it may include GPU or it may not, dependent on the user type that you choose. And I'll go through that in a minute. Of course, that gives you the compliance that it's staying on premise. And it gives you the performance as well, that it's not in the cloud. It's it's on your data center. Um, and it means that you don't have an issue of dragging huge files over the, over the um, internet connection, for example. So the way we designed it is where the purple dotted line sits we've got the green boxes underneath that that's all the stuff that we manage so we do a complete end-to-end -end service for you where we manage the compute the storage the GPU the hypervisor and the Citrix or VMware control layer it can be either Citrix um, um, Citrix cloud or Citrix on-premise or it can be a VMware horizon view and then what we do is we expose to you role-based access control to the self-service portal. And then you can basically load your own images into the platform, much like you would do if you loaded your images into um, Citrix Cloud or if you load your images into uh, an environment inside um, Azure. If you need us to do any of the uh, other things in the orange boxes, so the end user help desk or support or profile management, we can do all that. And that's HP Point Next services do every single one of those. Uh, and we do it for many customers around the world. And we do some of them, we do all of them, we do little bits of them. But in most cases, if you just want to get the platform, then this is the best way to get in a very fast and very performant um, VDI platform. The other thing to think about here is that it's designed for growth. So uh, the whole idea with GreenLake is that you grow it over a period of time. And I know from my experience of putting in VDI environments, you're not going to just replace all of your VDI environments if you've got existing VDI in one go. You're going to buy a new platform and you're going to move house into it, some of your workloads, 
And then over time, as you sunset some of your other workloads, you'll move them into this new platform and the new design. So GreenLake VDI will grow with you and you can just call off more and more infrastructure as you need and we can just scale it up as, as you see fit. And as I said, you pick which one of the uh, options that you want, task knowledge, power, persistent or engineering. And then what we do is we build an infrastructure in the background that fits in with those profiles. So this is an example of a customer that needed 800 task users and task users is your standard shared server. And then all the rest of them are your common VDI type environments. Engineering is the one that's slightly different. That's a, that's a heavy GPU profile. So it could be that there is a heavy CAD CAM user. It could even be traders from a banking environment or just someone as a developer that needs a really powerful bit of infrastructure. Um, it's even been used for video editing as well. And that's the type of uh, scale that we're talking about there. And you'd pick your choice from each of those workloads. This, uh, like I say, if you download the handouts, I've got to explain this slide because a lot of people will look at it and go, oh, um, that's good. I like the pricing, but you've got to understand that the scenarios are all based on the entire scenario. So the scenario A, the price for the task user is only $20.48, assuming you took 400 of those plus the 300 of the other, the 200 of the power and the 100 of the power non-persistent, for example. So these are just ROM pricing, representative pricings to show you. They don't scale linearly because it's all based on the, the total volume of the infrastructure. As I've said before, if you know that you are going to grow the environment and you can tell us uh, beforehand, the pricing gets better because we can factor that in. And it's a, a um, you know, we can turn pricing around very quickly. So this is just in indicative. Um, the platform scales in Green 8 VDI from 500 up to um, 20,000 users and beyond. Um, so, you know, we can we can scale it up and down as you see fit so obviously get in touch with us and, and and contact us if you need some further pricing and you're interested in this so the benefits of the green lake vdi i've already covered most of this but again it's all built in as highly available so the platform itself has full redundancy built in um, it uses some of the technology simplicity so that has some of the native redundancy built into it some of the technology it uses is vsan so there is still VMware sat underneath the Citrix environment. But the whole idea of this is that I'm talking about all this technology, but in reality, it's meant to be delivered as a service. So you just consume it by telling us how much you want of each one. And we give you a platform that performs in the way that you expect and delivers the plat and, and delivers the benefits that you're expecting as well. And we send you reporting and show you who's using what and what consumption is so that you've got full full transparency around that. And it's fully managed from end to end as well. I forgot to say that. We actually manage the platform for you. So it is like a service, like something like Office 365, but it's sat in your data center. So above and beyond that, talking of Office 365, the other thing to talk about here is uh, Teams. See, the other thing we've uh, done some investment in very quickly is we, we have a large Office 365 practice inside HP Point Next. Um, it's one of the jobs that I've recently been working on in the US. I've been working on customer deliveries for 365. Um, we have a big team around the world that have done many 365 deliveries, including some of the world's largest ones on, with Microsoft. Um, so. We also have done some small implementations of 365 as well. And we decided that actually the other thing that we're seeing a lot of is people not really understanding how to use three, uh, Teams or, or, or know what Teams is and, and how Teams can benefit the business. And they might have little bits of it. They're using the, the collaboration tools maybe, or they're just using the conferencing piece, a bit like using Zoom. And actually, we said, is there a way that we can help a customer that has already got an Office 365 tenant to get the most out of their Teams environment and allow them to, to manage and maintain that Teams workload um, without there being any risk and, and, and allowing you to, again, leverage our skills and knowledge of having done this for many other customers and get you up and running really quickly? And it could be that you don't even have a Teams environment, an Office 365 environment, and we can help you build one very quickly, make it secure and make it performant and get you onto it very fast. So again, this is a, a workshop in, uh, solution. 
that we would come in and spend a few days with you where we would do a pre-assessment. We'd go through an assessment with you, go through a very quick design phase. We know the paradigms of what Teams is meant to look like and how it's meant to work. So we can help you go through that design, help you remediate anything you need to remediate to get things up and running build the platform with you, then run it out and enable it. And we have a very good management of change team that will um, work with you to do the communications out to your end users, to um, enable you to um, train your end users in how to use the platform and give them all the benefits of what Teams is all about and how to use Teams um, to their best. Um, we find HPE, our big differentiator is the management of change and um, Kevin will go through that in a minute. But in many cases, we have come in even when a customer has already been moved to Office 365, but they're not getting the best out of the platform. We can help you leverage the tools that you've got, help you leverage the environment that you have, and help you utilize that so that you can be productive remotely, as well as just having the platform there and, and get the return on investment that you've made in what is ex an expensive platform. So that's all about Teams. And I will hand it over now to you, Kevin. Um, yes. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, great. The slide. Thanks for that, Mark. And uh, so Mark has covered uh, the collaboration in the top right. Uh, this is, again, Kevin Kramer. I, I uh, run our services uh, for the uh, workplace services as part of Point Next for HPE in uh, North America as a, a geo or geography for us. And so if we talk about remote workforce productivity, one of the things I wanted to cover is connect and protect in this bottom right quadrant. So everything that Mark was talking about assumes that we can make and have some connectivity if we're remote, if we're at our, our homes or some other remote location that we're able to access the information we need. Uh, and at the same time that we provide um, some security in the process. So I wanted to go over that and then I'll cover in a minute after that a bit of what uh, we talked about earlier about management of change. So how are we all staying connected? I was, it was amusing and fun and, and wonderful to see that at the beginning of this webinar, a few of you had said hello and were in, uh, into the question box and had greeted us from Maryland, Seattle, New York, Phoenix, India, and other places. And I think we're all um, feeling the need to connect and stay connected uh, with each other in the workplace and in our, our personal lives as well. Um, and, and so just want to take a look, how are we staying connected with our employees and with our customers uh, at this point and, and during the pandemic? So it really differs by vertical and may, may have unique solutions for each vertical. Healthcare, as you can imagine, looking very much at um, an opportunities around telemedicine. I just spoke to my father and he's having his first teledoctor experience uh, this week. And it's interesting to see how uh, each industry is shifting to capitalize and or leverage different technologies to make their, their business or their, the way they operate happen. Uh, for retail, um, drive-through, pop-up sites. So we can imagine drive-through and if you're going to a home improvement store and picking something up, um, uh, having wireless and wireless connectivity available in the parking lots for your customers or whether they're waiting online in a queue uh, six feet apart before they enter, having uh, wireless connectivity, being able to browse discounts or what's available in the store. Then, of course, we spend a lot of time on the workplace uh, and working from home and being able to do that effectively when, uh, when they're not actually connected and not in the actual physical workplace um, of the company. And then education, distance learning. Um, here are some of the ways in which that, that our education systems, our schools are reaching out to their learners, to their students, is through distance learning and providing that uh, ability to provide training remotely. So I want to talk a bit more about that. And we'll talk about first around the connectivity piece and how do we provide some of these new solutions? What's different? So there are certainly remote working. We're spending a lot of time on that one, um, being able to extend the corporate network at the home whether that's through a VPN, whether it's through VDI, whether we deploy some wireless at the home as well to contend with the additional need for access and bandwidth, uh, even uh, phone connections and the like to make sure people have the proper audio. In the middle here, remote learning, curbside pickup, talked a bit about this around having wireless services available to enable um, wireless and connectivity in new spaces. 
in doing so securely. And then temp spaces, uh, triage, testing, uh, sites that are popping up or even temporary locations that are created, and we might see more temporary locations for various purposes uh, come up and being able to deploy connectivity rapidly. Uh, obviously, wireless has a big play here, but also cellular and wired connections as well uh, are in the mix for creating those that connectivity. And then when we do that, we cannot uh, leave behind security. Security has to be part of all of this. And, and uh, as we talk to our customers, what's paramount is whatever solutions we bring to the fore have security by design and that we've thought about how this is going, not going to open up the, the company or the customer to more uh, threats. So endpoint protection, looking at how we can deploy that on endpoints uh, and make those more secure, even if they're not a company or a company owned assets. Uh, advanced threat protection, doing some sandbox integration, checking out what the threats are, looking at next generation firewalls, as well as secure remote access using VPNs. I think Mark touched on HPE's own experience and being able to expand our virtual private network capacity and capability. Um, and, and so however you're uh, enabling employees to connect into the environment, whether that's cloud, VPN, or other means, uh, being able to expand that uh, as needed for your employees. And then endpoint visibility, providing some understanding of what's happening in your environment, where your uh, employees and users or customers are accessing the information and ensure that that visibility is there, whatever new solutions are brought to bear. Okay, and then management of change. Uh, I, I like this next slide. I think it kind of covers these next two slides covers really the value of management of change. And one of the things, this is one of our lessons learned in uh, over the years of deploying different technologies. I think we all have war stories where you know, equipment was purchased and then just sat there and or was not utilized or a solution was, was integrated, transformed, and then the employees took a long time to adjust to that. So this, this chart is we regularly use to illustrate that you want to get to that performance gain you expected really rapidly and over time. And that's that's certainly true today. And the, the disruption in the environment for employees is probably at an all time high. They're doing things very differently. Uh, we're talking about deploying new technologies to enable that. That all requires those employees to understand what's going on, to uh, believe they're part of the solution and to have the skills to move forward and to really leverage that new technology as much as possible. So we talk about it as being ready, willing, and able. This is a good way to think about it. So when you look at some of these technologies or whatever plans you are today, I would encourage you to think about it in the context of whether your employees are ready, meaning that they've been informed. They know you've communicated what's happening, when it's happening, what resources they have to go with. That they're willing, they understand why. It's often really important to understand why you're using this new technology. Hey, we're implementing VDI or VPN or this cloud technology for this purpose, and they understand why this is being done and how they can be part of the solution and how they can really help the company. And lastly, being able. So do they have the skills? Do they have nowhere they can go to get the skills, the training to be able to use that new service and new technology? So Ready, Willing, and Able is a good way to look at it. We do have a whole management of change practice within HPE, and, uh, and that's what we can certainly help you with. We actually also have something called a quick start couple of weeks service for management of change to help you get started and to, uh, to help you with the, whatever changes you're working on in your environment. One of the things we can do as well is provide some instructor-led training and whether that's through HPE or whether you do something internally, uh, certainly something as important as a component here of being able to provide training. And this can be, uh, as you see here, based on some of these different technologies, um, a pretty broad range of technologies and vendors, or whether it, you need some assistance and training uh, on something you've developed internally or a new process, we can help with that as well. Uh, we also have something called the Digital Learner, which is a subscription-based service, and you get access to all of this different uh, training technologies and training sessions. Uh, it includes labs, it includes a bunch of other things here uh, across a, a whole slew of topics. And you also get uh, uh, analysis and guidance from HPE experts. Um, just there's an offer here for one month free. Uh, if you select that before the end of May, you get a free month. 
um, and then can decide if you want to, to re-up that uh, for a year afterwards. And there's some discounts, uh, some big discounts as well for this service. So if you're looking at upping some of the skill side, we can provide that and uh, have that one month free service there. There's the link and that will also be in your handout that you have there. Uh, visual remote guidance, this is an interesting one too, because we've talked a lot about work uh, workers in the office, but what about workers in the data center? or workers in the field, maybe it's an oil rig or somewhere remote, uh, where you need to provide assistance. The, the overall um, intent is to reduce the number of people we have physically on premise, on site, and, uh, and certainly keep them distant from each other. So how do you get those skills across? Well, one of the ways we can do that is something called visual remote guidance. Um, and you can take a look at that. There's a free uh, trial up in the top right uh, for 90 days. Um, and you can take a look at using that. Now, whether you have a wearable headset with a little camera on it or whether you're just using your cell phone, which you can do as well, uh, it allows somebody who's maybe doesn't have the exact skills needed in the data center to communicate on the right-hand side with somebody who's an expert. And they might say, oh, nope, that's not the right slot. Go down one. That's where you want to push that, that cartridge in or that, that drive in and then remember to press this button. And they can annotate that all, all live. So this is really helpful where you don't have the skills physically present where you need them to be uh, and encourage you to take a look at, at the YouTube uh, video and uh, also of course check out our free trial that we have available as well. So how do we, well, what would we do to recommend to move quickly? One of the things is to certainly assess where you are today. Uh, like a lot of our customers have gone through multiple iterations of analyzing, figuring out how to address the, the fire if there's some real critical issues around getting remote working uh, to work. So assess what your options are. We can help whether it's a one day that Mark was talking about earlier or whether it's a longer one week or so advisory service. We can help you pull that plan together and so you understand what you need to do and, and help you uh, establish that. Uh, in the process, we can establish a, an emergency remote work option. Uh, that could be a, a mix of different technologies, whether it's VDI or VPN. Uh, we can leverage assets to keep the, the cost low uh, and, and to really uh, make that attractive to you. I know all everyone is looking to not spend uh, a lot of money, and so, the, so we can show you ways in which you can do that uh, more inexpensively. And I'll get in a minute to the OpEx version of that where you can pay uh, over time. Uh, rapidly deploy or extend the enter enter enterprise grade VDI. Uh, we've got some ready to ship solutions, um, which actually can deploy VDI quite rapidly. And we can talk to you about how to do that best. Um, and as well as the networking side, if you need better connectivity, we can talk about that. And then scale the existing up and down. I, I think just want to highlight what Mark was talking about with GreenLake VDI. You do pay for uh, everything included on a single monthly bill, and it's based on usage. Um, so as your usage go goes down, you pay less. If it goes up, you pay more. Um, and, and that's really nice and convenient, uh, flexible way to provide that remote access, and especially provide the remote access for maybe untrusted devices, since with VDI, all the data stays in the data center. Some great options for you to move forward. Uh, how we can help here, we're here to help, um, however it might be, not just these topics, if there's something else you need some help with, please let us know. Uh, we were just on the expertise side on the bottom left, recognized in IDC's Marketscape survey for workplace services, we were recognized as a leader. We were also in separate surveys for network and IoT services, we were also identified in the top right quadrant as leaders in that space too, based on surveying actual customers and their experience and their rating of our, our, our services. Uh, we have the technology of certainly of uh, VDI solutions or VPN or, or wireless or whatever you might need. We have the technology to bring to bear. And that means we can also include some of our partners and other technologies, uh, whatever you need to complete the solution. And the economics as well. So we have the ability to provide as a service models. We also have several other options. Um, I didn't talk too much around HPE financial services, but we have the options um, really to help you defer expenses, free up cash. We have a payment deferral program that's active now that could be really uh, helpful to you if you're strapped for cash. Uh, we have a tech buyback program to buy back some of your older equipment and put money in your pocket. 
Uh, we can even extend deployments uh, based on budget cycles and even certified pre-owned technologies as well that we can bring to bear. So a lot of options through HPE Financial Services that we can help you out as well um, based on your specific needs. Okay, uh, and just to sum up from our experience, we've got more than 20 years of experience, not just in VDI, but in digital workplace services. Um, so quite, the, quite a deal of industry leadership and experience. We've got the financial strength um, our presence around the world, as well as our ability to leverage HP financial services, our global expertise, whether it's on-premise, whether it's through the cloud services, uh, you name it, we've got the expertise and the experts, we can help you uh, develop that plan pretty quickly. And partner of choice, um, we have a great deal of strong partnerships, partnerships with Citrix, VMware, Microsoft, and many others, um, and multi-vendor expertise. I, Want to highlight too that we do operate as a multi multiple vendors. So however we need to bring your solution together, um, we can do that and bring the right partners to bear. Okay. And lastly, just wanted to thank you. Um, this is one view. I, I do like this image and the, one of the prior images of how we're all working from home. We've got all a different way of working, a different office space, um, and as we address that, I uh, really appreciate your uh, attention as we see how we can help. Uh, with some of these services. Okay, back to David. Excellent presentation. Thank you, Kevin, and thank you, Mark. Uh, let's see, we do have some questions here for you from the audience. Uh, if you haven't gotten your question in yet, I encourage you to do so now because we're starting our Q&A session. While we do that, I'm just going to bring up this slide and the question on the screen you just answer in the slides window there is what additional information would you like about the HPE solutions that you learned about on today's event? So let's see, first question that came in, uh, Jeff is asking about the virtual labs, uh, the HPE digital learning options. Uh, Mark or Kevin, mm -hmm. what can you tell us about that? Yeah, sure. We have uh, virtual labs available as part of the uh, digital learner subscription. Um, just to note that that free the free offer did not include the virtual labs, but we do offer that as part of a regular service. So I think one of the things that um, uh, customers like to see is is being able to to log into uh, actual machines and and play with uh, software and hardware, uh, and that's something that we do offer as part of the uh, digital learner uh, service. And we can provide you more information on that if you like. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Okay, let's see. Next question they're asking. Um, what do you do to help employees use new technologies? Or what do you provide, I'm sorry, to help employees use new technologies? Yeah, and so I think that's that ready, willing, and able we talked about with management of change. Um, it, part of it is just you know training on technical skills. But part of it is also being able to communicate and, um, and schedule their communications. For example, I know we work with a lot of customers around Office 365 and migrating. One of the important things there is regularly communicating each wave of users that are migrating. Hey, in 60 days, you're migrating. Here are the resources you can use in 30 days. And then the day of the migration, as an example, having floor, floor walkers walking around answering any questions, having pamphlets to provide quick notes as to what to do. So there are lots of different options. Depends how, uh, how big of a change is you're introducing in the environment and the, the extent to which you want to provide certain materials to those employees to get them over that. And uh, a lot of it also is monitoring and getting feedback from the employees. How is this going? Where could we do better? Um, you know, uh, we did that as well uh, just internally when a few years ago when we switched over to Office 365, we did a lot of, um, a lot of communication and a lot of back and forth to understand what challenges there were, what people were experiencing, and making sure everybody was, again, ready, willing, and able to use that new technology. Yeah, I'll, I'll add to that, Kevin. I think the other thing is, um, from a um, remote user perspective in the, in the current climate, also some of the things that you were saying around things like floor walkers and so on and so forth, we can also provide uh, access to um, knowledgeable staff and support via things like Zoom. So the, the modern version of a floor walker, if you're allowing those staff to work from home on their own machine with, on an untrusted device, 
you need an, a, a software as a service platform that they can talk to that isn't constrained inside your network. So potentially using something like Zoom may allow you to provide that support and remotely assist those users with being able to get onto the platform and, and, and set stuff up because they might be non-technical. So that's also using the current That's a great example. That. Yeah, and thanks for, for correcting me. They're not gonna have floor walkers approach somebody's house, right, uh, in this day and age. So it's uh, as we all adapt to the way that new services are delivered, it's great. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. All right, let's see, next question. How would you, how would an on-premise VDI solution be better than a cloud VDI service? I can take this one. So, about, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's um, it depends where your data is in, in, in some respects, but in, in most cases, um, if a customer has a huge amount of legacy applications and lots of data that they need to access on premise, um, and they haven't moved a lot of their applications out to software as a service, you're going to have a much better performance because there's this whole, there's two challenges that you get and two of the solutions that VDI solves is there's a, a distance paradigm. The further away you move the compute from the actual platform, um, and when I say compute there, I'm talking about the end user device. So if you have an example of a, a, a client server architectural model with a fat client running on a running on a, a PC, a desktop PC, and it's making a query to a client server environment and then into a database inside a mainframe or inside a, uh, um, even saying inside a SQL farm inside your your site, if you're sat on the same site as that, you're going to get a really performant and responsive application. It's going to work really well. If that application is sat on a machine that's got a 300 millisecond latency and the application and data is held somewhere else, the end user is going to have a terrible uh, experience using that application. And the whole point of that is that what you do is you then expose that old legacy application that uses that client server model inside VDI, which means the only thing that you're actually moving is the, the pixels back to you and you're sending the keystrokes and the mouse movements. So that would be a, a use case for that on-premise VDI solution. If you've started to move some of your uh, compute out to Azure, for example, a cloud VDI service like Windows Virtual Desktop may be a better solution for you because it might solve that problem because again your compute and your 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 platform are in the same data center if you're hosting stuff in azure and you've got your windows virtual desktops in azure it could be that some of your users may be better served by using a cloud vdi so you've got different use cases for each of those different types yeah and would you say um from a just from a regulatory security perspective too there are some advantages of being on premise um and also yes. i would say oh, yes. from uh controlling controlling your own destiny I, I mean one of the great things about the on premise is that you're able to you know you've got the capacity there for you rather than some of these cloud yeah, services um are yeah, doing well yeah and that's yeah, a Mark. really good point kevin because it's it's something that um a lot of customers have fallen foul of in the last three to four weeks. I know that UK South and UK North in Azure, for example, have really struggled to provision infrastructure. Uh, there are customers who actually had reserved instances inside Azure who would shut down their environments overnight and then try to switch them on in the morning and not be able to provision the infrastructure because it's run out, it's run out of capacity. And Microsoft have provisioned your infrastructure to some other customer. So that becomes a real problem is that you've got no guarantee that you're actually going to be able to turn on the machines that you need when you need them. At least when you've got them on premise, as you say, they're there, they're running and they're ready for you. And if you've got them in a green light model, you've got the best of both worlds because you're not using them if you've not got them switched on and you're not using that capacity. When you're switching it on and you need that capacity, you're paying for it. So yeah, it's there. Yeah. So and I, I think it's yeah. interesting too, is just as we transition to, I don't know, people are calling it the new normal or whatever, wherever we're going next with work. And I think you alluded to this, Mark, earlier that uh, it likely will change. So maybe more remote working than there was done before. Maybe fewer offices, but smarter offices. There may be some changes. So whatever way you're going, you'll address that. However way you can address that remote working will likely have a mix of all of these things, depending on, very much dependent on what you're trying to achieve. And, and as you started with Mark around the business continuity, what is your business continuity plan? Yep. 
and that's that's the key thing is that the change that we think we've seen here is there is as i said earlier on a lot of people didn't plan for um everyone having to remote work and it sort of caught us on the hop and, and to be f fair that's not it, it it's not unexpected um with regards to we didn't plan for it because it wasn't something that any of us expected was going to happen right now it, all of the documentation all of the literature if you've read it over the last 10 years pandemic was bubbling around but it wasn't really something that everyone would have planned for because you plan for the most expensive and, and, and business impacting items that are predicted um this wasn't something that was predicted and a lot of people didn't design for it I think the companies that were mobile and had already taken the mobility paradigm into into heart really weren't affected that heavily. But even like I say, even companies like us got affected um, because of the fact that we even had um, you know capacity issues on our VPN. So great points, great points. Yeah, the pandemic wasn't something that was in most disaster recovery plans out there. Um, next question that came in here. They're asking, uh, where would I employ VDI, or when would I employ VDI versus a VPN? I think it's so, about trusted versus um, untrusted devices, Mark, right? Yeah, that's right. So um, you, if you give someone access via a VPN, um, historically, actually, you've given them network access to your environment. So if that device is infected with a malware, you've potentially given them access to the inside of your network. And it might be that even with modern VPN environments and segmentation, micro segmentation, and some clever stuff you can do on your VPN concentrator, you're reducing your risk posture. But actually with VDI, the, the end device never touches your network. It's only the client that touches your network via an SSL tunnel. And none of the cl um, client's um, traffic on the actual endpoint device will flow through that that ssl tunnel it's only the the say citrix um platform connect connectivity going through the gateway server into your network so it's a much more hands-off environmental approach and actually it gives you a better environment to allow other devices such as you know configure an ipad for vpn is not hard but it's not as easy as configuring a desktop pc for vpn for example but with Citrix, with the Citrix client, you can put Citrix workspace on pretty much anything, including a Raspberry Pi. If someone has a Raspberry Pi at home and they need to be, and they need to connect into your environment, they can download um, a current Raspberry Pi. You can download the Citrix workspace app and just plug it into a monitor, and you've got a, a thin client. So, so, would you say that less trusted devices more likely to use v, VDI because this way you're you're not exposing as much? It's safer, yeah. If if you yeah. you don't have to control and posture manage the endpoint device, it's a much safer way of doing it. Yes. Okay, great advice. And there's a question that came in here from Richard. He's asking about uh, li licensing requirements and challenges when it comes to these kind of shared VDI environments. How do you license software? How do you manage the the applications in those environments when it comes to the licensing? So um, if you're talking about a, an urgent requirement around remote desktop, for example, then that is just an expansion of a Citrix client license. Um, and actually the licensing from a um, standard PC perspective doesn't change for things like your Adobe license and an office license and so on and so forth. Um, where you get challenges around, and, and I should add actually at the moment, Citrix are doing a bit of an offer on um, expansion, temporary expansion of your licensing. So if you've already got one or, or a few licenses, um, you can, I think it's a, a almost a half price offer at the moment that they're doing to allow you to expand for a year. So if you need to expand your licensing posture with Citrix, for example, they've got a, a method to do it. The other thing they've just done from a consumption's perspective from VDIs, they've just also enabled um, contended access licenses as well. So they've just come on stream. Um, so you don't have to pay per user per month, you can pay per desktop per month. Um, and then when it comes to shared servers, there are specific license requirements you have around that. But actually, if you use something like Citrix to manage that environment, um, 
you can control which div which users have access to which applications and therefore you can license it much better with vdi it's just like a standard desktop model so as long you know because they're discrete devices you license it in the same way that you would license the the desktop devices um if you've got um and it's worth noting as well if you've got a microsoft e3 or microsoft e5 license and you've got your uh, and therefore you've got your windows 10 licenses inside that the vdi the windows client licenses are, are bundled in with that uh, and also that includes Windows Virtual Desktop. So it's worth noting if you've got MS365, you've got some sort of coverage of that anyway. We can go into de more detail around specific requirements if you wanted to, Richard, at some stage. So just contact us and we can go through it. Okay, excellent advice. Well, it looks like that's all the time we have in today's event. Before we go, I wanted to award the Amazon $300 gift card. That's going to Eric Gadley of Pennsylvania. Uh, congratulations. Thank you, Kevin and Mark. We really appreciate it. And thank you, of course, to our thank audience you. for being on the event today. And finally, thank you to HPE. For more information, make sure you check out the handouts in today's uh, audience console before you go. And thank you, everyone, for joining. Have a great day.